TOA community, Robert Linkle, trainingtheolderadult.com here to answer your rucking questions. Rucking question number five, how heavy a weight should a rucker use and how should they carry it, uh, shoulder or hip? So number one, the, the way to answer this question is it depends on the person. I, I know that's a little bit of a cop out, but it's hard for me to just say to you, uh, if you're this heavy or if you're this height and this weight, carry this. And if you're this one, carry that. I'll give you kind of a, a general guideline of that in a moment, but it really depends on the person. If you are brand new, you're just starting out with this, you've never rucked before at any age, start really light. Five or 10 pounds would be absolutely fine. If you are a bit frail, and I don't mean you know like in that in a discouraging way, I just mean if you are over, let's say the age of 50, and you've never done this, and you are not currently resistance training, and this is the first thing you're ever gonna do, to try to work on your bone density and strength, start with five pounds, literally five pounds. You can get a vest, you can get a little backpack, whatever it is you're gonna wear, just make sure it's wrapped tight to your body. And I would do five pounds. And I would start with that for a week or two and then go up to seven and a half pounds and do that for a week or two and then go to 10 pounds. And right around 10 pounds is kind of our minimum load where it's like, I wanna do that on a regular basis. And then you could build up to upwards of 10% of your body weight. Now, that 10% is kind of that general standard. That's where we'll suggest most people kind of get to or start with or work up to as a general training consistent load. About 10% of your body weight could be a regular training load, um, you know, two or three times a week. And then maybe one of those, you go a little bit heavier, 15 or 20%. At most, on occasion, go up to about 30% of your body weight every once in a while. I'll say I'll carry upwards of 20 to 25% of my body weight two times a year, maybe three. And that's with a, spe a specific emphasis on one particular workout where I'm honoring somebody or we're doing something where uh, it's like, hey, you're going to carry a heavy load for a short distance at a rather quick rate. And then you get to strip away some of that weight and then go do, you know, a little bit more distance. And uh, I, I think in those select few moments, upwards of 20 to 30% would be fine. But I love that 10%, 10 to 15, switch in between there all you want, and you'll notice big differences in how hard you work if you have 10% one day and 15 the next, even though that might only be a two and a half or a five pound jump. If you're a big guy like me, it's a 10 pound jump. That's a you know, pretty significant amount of load to add because remember, it's every single step that you take. Here's 30 pounds, 60 pounds, 90 pounds versus 35, 70, 105. Wow, that, that escalated quickly. Like that extra little bit of weight adds up over that three, two, three miles that you're going. So I would start there. Another like very general rule of thumb that I've heard of, I'm not a huge fan of it, but I've heard of is if you're 150 pounds or less, carry 10 pounds. If you're 150 plus pounds, you could carry 15 or 20. I think that's, again, just kind of a general rule. Male or female, big frame or small, I, I always think you can't go wrong with your body weight percentage because it's a percentage of what you're made of. So if you always kind of start with, you know, seven and a half to 10% of your body weight, you should be good. Should you carry it on shoulder or hip? Again, this is another preference. Um, check uh, question number three, I think it was. I would dive into that a little bit more in detail, but the hip straps definitely reduce your axial vertical load pressure on your body for sure. So if you have back, hip, shoulder, neck issues, I would 100% get some hip straps and be able to take those hip, the hip belt just above your iliac crest, that's the top of your pelvis, just above that, cinch it up a bit and then let that weight kind of sink it down. It should kind of fit right over your hips like a glove. That squeezes tight around you, puts most of the pressure of the weight you're carrying on the hips and now the shoulder straps basically just hold the backpack against your back and then the little strap that hooks together here that's another key uh, component to keeping that weight tethered tight to you and it's not going to allow the shoulder straps to separate or move about or for that extra load <laughs> for that extra load to start to pressure down on your body so i encourage you to use that little strap in the middle as well uh, i think that if you just want to in, encourage more upper body stress, then not using the hip belt would be fine. But again, I think most aging bodies, you'll be much more comfortable with hip support. Comments, questions, hit me up down below. If not, we'll see you in the next one. Peace.